Welcome back. In this section we're going to talk about the Euler equation which is given in the top center of your screen. And the Euler equation is one of the most important and powerful expressions using complex numbers. It says that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i times the sine of theta. And in this section we're going to show that the Euler equation is true. And we're going to do that by taking a Taylor series expansion on each of the terms and showing that it is true. You may or may not know that an arbitrary function, let's say the f of z, can be expressed or decomposed into an infinite sum using an infinite power series. And this is a standard mathematical technique. For example, Fourier series are when we decompose a function into an infinite sum of cosines and sines. So specifically here, if we were to sum all of these terms to infinity, it is the equivalent of a single f of z. So you can take it from me for the moment that this infinite power series is equivalent to our f of z, an arbitrary f of z. Note by the way that this z sub zero here is actually what's known as a pole, and really that's a divide by zero or a non-analytic scenario, which isn't important for the current circumstance at all. Simply accept that we can express or decompose a function into an infinite sum of various components. Now, one of the most used and powerful power series expansions is known as a Taylor series expansion. And what we are going to do is we're going to take a Taylor series expansion of e to the i theta, of cosine theta, and of sine theta, iota times the sine of theta, and we'll see that putting them all together, the Euler equation is true. If you'd like to know more about Taylor series, then I refer you to a video I did in my series on thermodynamics. So here are the details of the Taylor series expansion. So basically we have the same expression as we had previously, except I've plugged in the functional form for the constants or the coefficients, which are known as the a sub n's. And note by the way, the f with the n as the superscript, that is the derivative. So it's the nth derivative of our particular function and it's evaluated at z is equal to z zero. And generally we're gonna say that we're gonna evaluate it at z or x is equal to zero. So basically all of these terms added to infinity are equivalent to our f of z. And when I take a Taylor series, I'm gonna use the nomenclature of t outside of the function to say I'm taking a Taylor series. Now in this video, I won't be going into detail and showing the Taylor series of an exponential or cosine or sine. I'll be basically giving you the results. However, I will show you all of the answers in detail subsequently, and if you want, you can pause the video then. So, as I said, we are going to show that the Euler equation is true by taking a Taylor series expansion of each of the terms in the Euler equation. And here is the definition of the Taylor series. If we take a Taylor series of e to the x, we're going to get this infinite power series. I've only put in the first three terms. As I said, I'll show you all of the steps subsequently. Now, if we substitute, instead of having e to the x, we have e to the i theta. Here are the first four terms in the infinite power series, or the infinite sum. I'd like that you note that some of the elements in the power series expansion are complex, excuse me, are imaginary numbers, and some of them are real numbers. And this suggests that we should group the imaginary numbers and the real numbers together. And that's what I'm getting at here. So what I've done at the bottom center of your screen is to gather the real components from the Taylor series expansion of e to the i theta and the imaginary components of that same Taylor series expansion. So the Taylor series expansion of e to the i theta has the following real components and the following imaginary components. That is to say it is a complex number. And it turns out that these terms here are the Taylor series expansion of cosine theta and these terms here are the Taylor series expansion of sine theta. Ergo or therefore the Euler equation is correct. 
So we have just shown that one of the most important expressions using complex numbers is true, that the Euler equation is true, and e to the i theta is cosine theta plus iota times the sine of theta. And the Euler equation is a very powerful expression to use in science, engineering and mathematics. And very often what we do is we try and convert from cosines and sines to complex exponentials because the mathematical um, manipulation using complex exponentials is much simpler. For example, and I don't want to get bogged down in it, say you just had a single cosine of theta and you wanted to convert it to a complex exponential. Well, you could both add and subtract a complex sinusoid so you get the same thing but you would be allowed to use the complex exponential representation. And that trick actually is used in the derivation of the Fourier transform. Anyway, I did say that I would show you all of the steps in showing that the Euler equation is true. And here they are. So if you want, you can pause the video as I show you each of the screens. Specifically, what we're looking at here is taking the Taylor series expansion of e to the x centered at x is equal to x0, which is equal to 0. And here are all of the steps required to take the Taylor series expansions of e to the i theta, cosine theta, and sine theta. Putting those all together then, we have the rigorous derivation of the Euler equation. So that's the end of this section. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next section.